Hello my fiber friends and family. Welcome to Cabin Fever Crochet. I'm Helene and appreciate you so much for stopping by. I hope you will enjoy this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And if you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. And I always love your comments too. Well, this is a work in progress, but I'm coming out with it now because I know those of you are waiting for it and would like to get started, and blankets take time anyway, so here it is. It's a really fun one. I haven't decided on a border yet or, or if I even am going to do one, and it's okay because this has such nice clean edges that you can work it with or without one of your choosing, or if you want to play around and try to create your own, and I'll explain to you how easily you can do that in just a little bit once I start working up the sample. You can work it in just about any type of yarn that you like. And this is a variety of number fours. And my inspiration for this was a crochet along a cow for this really fun luck of the draw blanket at Nan's Next Knots. Link for that is below. And my goal was to use the majority of yarns that I already have, but because they were in varying different weights, it really wasn't working up in the way I had wanted it to. And so I decided to go ahead and play around with stitches, and I came up with my own. And I have another video explaining how I used different types and weights of yarn and brands to create one uniform piece and I will show you that here on the edge how nicely this really does work up. If you are interested in purchasing the written pattern for this I have a link below to my Etsy shop and if I decide to add a border after I finish the blanket which I very well may I will make an announcement on that and also do a tutorial. And for those of you who have already purchased this blanket pattern as it is, I will send you a link so that you can get the border at no extra charge. I'm going to start with a foundation double crochet and I encourage you to do the same. If you're not familiar with it, I have a link below also as part of my tips and fixes series showing you how I do mine and it creates a really nice stretchy fabric. You get full double crochet stitches going all the way across compared to a chain and then you turn back and you work a double crochet and then it's much easier to add on a border if you like and in addition to that your beginning foundation row and your ending row look the same. Alright, so I chain two instead of three, I yarn over and I insert my hook into the back bump. Yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over pull through the first loop that creates your first chain, three loops on the hook, yarn over pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the last two, which completes your double crochet. And you repeat the process by just working back in to chain that you just made. All right, yarn over and pull up a loop, pull through the first, go through two and two. All right, and this creates two chains on the edge, which I do not count as my first stitch. I work into the very first full double crochet only. This is going to give you a nice full edge and because as we are working back and forth on these rows we are going to work an alternate double crochet going up and why I wanted to show you this at the beginning. Alright, so go ahead work your foundation double crochet in an even number in multiples of three plus two. You make it as wide as you want for a full-size blanket, 
lapgan, afghan, throw. So I did multiples of three, 138 foundation double crochets plus two for a total of 140. So if I divide my initial multiples of three, the 138 divided by three, that gives me 46 repeats of three. All right, I hope that makes sense. And I will work up a sample size here, and I will see you in just a moment. Okay, I have a total of 14 foundation double crochets. My multiples of 3 are 12 plus 2. Oh, and if anyone is curious, I am working in the Mandala, Lion Brand Mandala Ombre in Tranquil. Okay, so this is our foundation row 1. Oh, and uh, this is a six row repeat. Yes, six rows, very easy. I like a one and two row repeat, but it's also fun to have a little bit of change up too. All right, so after you've worked your foundation, double crochet, turn the work, do not chain. We're going to work an alternate double crochet in the first, so insert your hook into the top two loops of your first stitch and work one single crochet. Insert your hook again into the front loop on the left. So you skip over this first part and you insert it into the left, the front loop facing you only, and work another single crochet. So that is an alternate double crochet. Now we're going to work a cross stitch row. You skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next, and then you're going to yarn over and cross over the double crochet that you just made and work another double crochet into that skipped stitch. And when you pull up your loop, pull up nice and tall because it's in essence you're working a post type of stitch when you do the crossover. So you want that second double crochet to be the same height so it doesn't squish your stitches down. Then you will just repeat and make cross stitches all the way across with a double crochet in your last stitch. All right, so let's do that again. Skip the next, double crochet into the next, yarn over, cross over the double crochet that you just made in front of it, and double crochet into this skipped stitch. Okay, skip one, double crochet in the next, cross over and double crochet in the skipped stitch. That's all there is to that. This is my last cross stitch. And double crochet in the last. That completes row two. Alright, again turn your work. Alternate double crochet in the first. A single crochet into the first loop front loop on the left, single crochet again, there's your alternate, and then now you just double crochet into each stitch all the way across. That's all you do on this one. And now on this row, after your cross stitch, your this double crochet row, this is the row to be careful of and make sure that you do not skip one, okay, and actually your double crochet, I mean the cross stitch, be careful of that too. Make sure that you don't accidentally skip a stitch, especially if you are you are working in a smaller hook or a smaller type of yarn, depend, or, or um, yarn that lofts up quite a bit or is fuzzy and your stitches are not as easily defined. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally skip a stitch and also you want to make sure that you don't accidentally double up working into the same 
stitch as your previous cross stitch because that is going to throw your number count off completely and you may not notice that until the row after the double crochet when you're coming back and working another stitch variation. Those I have found are the two rows where I most easily made a mistake and, and they're just really simple mistakes too but that's all it takes to throw the work off okay and then remember now if doing this alternate double crochet if you are new to it and you have a stitch marker handy after you make that alternate you might want to place a stitch marker in the top of it to be sure that you don't accidentally miss that at the end because it does tend to curve inward a little bit until you have completed your last stitch into that. Okay. Alright, so there we go for row three. Alright, row four, turn your work and again at the beginning of every row we're going to work that alternate double crochet. So see we're on row four already, easy as that. Okay, now we're going to skip the next stitch and work a V stitch in the next. Okay, so that's going to be one double crochet, chain one, and double crochet all into that same stitch. Now we're going to skip two, V stitch in the next, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all into the same stitch. Again, skip two, double crochet into the next, chain one, double crochet. And that is your repeat all the way across. Skip two, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and you do this across up to your last two stitches where you will skip the next just like we did at the beginning and then you double crochet into the last. Okay, so again recapping the V-stitch row you work your alternate in the first, you skip the next, V-stitch in the next, skip two V-stitch, skip two V-stitch, across to your last two, skip one, double crochet in the last. Completed row four, now we begin on row five. Turn your work alternate double crochet into the first and then now we are going to work a double crochet into every double crochet and every chain one space of each V stitch all the way across with the double crochet in the last. All right through the stitch of the next double crochet and into the chain one space, double crochet, into the second double crochet of the V-stitch and then you repeat that. Just make sure that you don't accidentally double crochet in between each V-stitch or you're going to wind up with an increase in a curve in your work. You want to maintain your same stitch count at the beginning all the way across. So if you started with 140 you are going to end with 140. Alright, so just double crochet and every double crochet and every chain one space all the way across and you double crochet in that very last stitch. And then the next row is pretty fun. 
that will be a cluster stitch and that is going to give some nice texture to this project, additional texture. The cross stitch gives texture too. So it just kind of mixes it up. All right, so here we go. Here's that last double crochet and you can see how that alternate curves in a little bit. Now I'm used to that and I know to make sure I put my last stitch in there. All right, so that is row five. Now we begin row six, our cluster row. And that's a fun one and adds just nice interest and texture along with the cross stitch. All right, so work your alternate double crochet. And this alternate stitch is also going to help with this row because we are going to work our cluster rows a little bit differently at the beginning and the end. So to begin you are going to skip the next stitch and work your three double crochet cluster in the next and you do that by yarning over, inserting your hook, pulling up a loop, gives you three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two two loops on your hook. You're going to repeat this two more times, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now you have three loops on your hook. One more time you yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, four loops on your hook and finally you yarn over and you pull through all four, chain one to lock it in and make sure you chain one every time at the end of each cluster. So now again we're going to skip the next cluster into the next. Okay. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now for the third time you're pulling through all four and chaining one. All right, so again, you skip one and you cluster into the next. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Pull through two, and now you yarn over, pull through all four, chain one, and work your double crochet into the very last. And by having a little bit extra thickness at the edge of that alternate double crochet fills in a little bit with that first, that skip stitch we did at the beginning. So it evens up the sides where we did not skip a stitch at the end. Okay, well it looks uniform, can't even tell in my opinion, in my eyes. Can't tell that there's any difference. Okay, so for this one you turn and you work your alternate double crochet in the first and then we are going to work a double crochet into each chain and into the top of every cluster all the way across. So turn the work here and you can see that more easily. Here is the chain, it's going to be the smaller of the two, and then you have that elongated stitch at the top of your cluster. So you're going to double crochet into each chain and the top of each cluster all the way across. And I want you to go through the stitch of the chain, not in between. That's going to give way too much separation and tug on your stitches and it won't look nice, okay? And then also make sure you double crochet in that very last double crochet at the end. Alright, so into the top of the chain. And your chain does count as a stitch, so when you work that make sure you're not pulling it too tight, alright? So double crochet into each chain and into the top of each cluster. Into your chain crochet and into your cluster. And there is the top of my last stitch. 
And this completes our six row repeat. And then you will just repeat rows two through seven. That is row two, the cross stitch, three, the double crochet, four, the V-stitch, five, the double crochet, six, the cluster, and seven, the double crochet. And then I would end by working another cross stitch and then another double crochet row so the, the top mirrors the bottom. That's, that is up to you. And that will also put your last double crochet row on the right side of your work. So you begin on the right and then you end on the right as well. And to me, this is an easy pattern to pick up and follow after you've set it down because I'm only working on mine once a week. And I just look and go, okay, yeah, I see. So my next row is the cross stitch. And I just look at my stitches and I see where I just did my alternate and started right into the next two stitches. Or you skip one, you work the double crochet, cross back over to the skip stitch. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that this would be easy to add a border because each row consists of double crochets. And each double crochet row, when you're working along the side, you will put two stitches in every row. So you just fit those in evenly all the way across. So here is the V-stitch row. You will put two stitches along the side. That is one row. Two stitches in this middle row. Two stitches in the last row. And you do that all the way across your side. Two, two, two. When you get up to the corner, you will place three stitches into your corner stitch to make that corner so it doesn't pull and curve your work. And then just one stitch, of course, in each double crochet all the way across. Three in the corner, the other corner, and along the side, just as I explained on the other side, two stitches in each row. Easy as that. So that's it. I really hope that you enjoyed this pattern. I did. I'm having a lot of fun working with it. So let me know if you make this, okay? And I'd love to know what yarn, how it's working up as you make progress. Thanks again for being here, everyone. I will see you again soon. And until then, take care. Bye for now.